good morning so this is another uh, uh, problem based on nyquist stability criteria in the previous problems what we have discussed uh, we started with a simple problem without any uh, poles in the imaginary axis in the second problem we have introduced uh, uh, we have discussed a, a pro problem which is having a pole in the imaginary axis especially uh, at origin and uh, this is the third problem where we are introducing a, a gain value k and here the the intention here is to find uh, what is the value of k uh, in such a way that the system remains in stable, stable region so let us get inside it it has a specific uh, methodology of uh, solving the problem uh, we will see that the statement of the problem is sketch the nyquist plot for a system with open loop transfer function g of s h of s is equal to k into 1 plus 0.5 s 1 plus s divided by 1 plus 10 s into s minus 1 determine the determine the range of values of k for which the system is stable so this is this is the statement of the problem and since we are not having any uh, pole at the imaginary axis we can take this as your nyquist contour in s plane before that we have to comment about the stability of uh, 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 open loop system because this is an open loop system and if you if you see uh, the s plane you are seeing the s plane now you have a pole at the right side of the s plane that is plus 1 is there the other poles and zeros you have two zeros and one pole in the left hand side this left hand side has two poles and one zeros and the right hand side has one pole actually so uh, based on the uh, stability notion we can we can say that the system uh, open loop system is unstable because we are we are having a we are having a right side pole now let us get inside the uh, actual nyquist based problem so as i said we are considering this as our nyquist contour and the entire uh, uh, right hand side of the s plane is being considered you can see that the radius of this is infinity c1 varies from omega is equal to 0 to infinity and c3 varies from minus infinity to 0 so we have to separately map this c1 c2 and c3 and we have to combine them to form a nyquist plot then based on the nyquist plot what we receive the diagram we have to comment about the stability and find the range of k right so let us consider the first section c1 if you if you find what is the diagram for c1 mapping of c1 then c3 will be the mirror image of that we already know that so c1 varies from omega from 0 to infinity and taking this transfer function g of s h of s is equal to k 1 plus 0.5 s 1 plus s 1 plus 10 s s minus 1 we cautiously see that whether this is in time constant form yes it is in time constant form so we convert this transfer function into s is equal to j omega form that is your sinusoidal transfer function so that we can vary the omega and find what is the magnitude and the phase how the locus is being moving how the poles travel and zeros travel right the roots travels here, right we can see that so we can we convert this uh, uh, actual s domain transfer function into a sinusoidal transfer function uh, so your transfer function is is converted into uh, this actually you 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 further manipulate you multiply these uh, factors together you are getting a form like this real real part and imaginary part are separated then it looks like this this is your real part and this is your imaginary part in the denominator and this is your imaginary part and this is your real part in the numerator now as we want this entire term to be uh, uh, real and imaginary because of our analysis we need that we want to convert this denominator into a, a, a real number so this complex has to be removed so what what we have to do uh, multiply and divide uh, the the complex conjugate 
in the numerator and the denominator that is what is been done here you can see that this term has a complex conjugate of this minus is converted into plus so numerator and denominator are multiplied with the complex conjugate of this so that i am getting a real term here not a complex term is vanished now 1 plus 10 omega squared the whole squared plus 9 omega squared will be the denominator then multiplying the terms in the numerator you are supposed to get a combined formation of a real and an imaginary so what is the procedure for mapping here especially if a k is been provided you have to do this these things based on the problem provided then we have to uh, find where it crosses the real axis where it crosses the real axis at the point minus 1 plus j0 so since it crosses the real axis imaginary part becomes zero let us assume that this term crosses the real axis so the imaginary part becomes zero so what is the frequency at which the imaginary becomes zero you equate the imaginary part equal to zero find the value of omega then substitute that omega in the real part and thereby you will be getting the gain value so first make the imaginary term to be zero so you substitute this particular term this term to be equal to zero you can see it here so the denominator becomes zero cross multiplying that okay now doing the manipulation what is there available you can see you can bring this to the other side so you will get a minus 15 omega pc becomes plus omega plus 15 omega pc k k gets cancelled omega pc omega pc gets cancelled this 9 can be taken this side so it becomes 15 by 9 so 15 by 9 1 plus 10 omega pc squared 1 minus 0.5 omega pc squared now you you take this uh, you multiply this 15 by 9 factor and uh, you take uh, you bring this omega pc squared terms one side and the constant terms to the other side you are getting this form 2.17 omega pc squared is equal to 0.833 so bring this 2.17 to the denominator the other side the right hand side then take square root you will get omega pc i am getting 0.62 radians per second so omega pc that is the phase crossover frequency the frequency at which minus 180 degree occurs that is the the polar plot crosses uh, uh, that actually that is what we call it as phase crossover frequency where gain margin is been calculated in polar plot you should have you, should, you are aware of that so substitute this 0.62 in your real part whatever you got it here this term this term actually k into 1 minus 0.5 instead of omega you put 0.62 i think you will be seeing that here when you substitute that i am getting a value like this 0.1667 k so the point at which the the plot crosses the real axis is 0.1667 k now we should know how the the plot moves while we are mapping from s plane to g of h of s plane for that you follow the procedure of polar plot what do you do you change omega from 0 to infinity find magnitude change and the phase uh, phase angle change so what is the magnitude if you take this is your transfer function then this term is square root of 1 plus 0.5 the whole uh, omega the whole squared and the angle is tan inverse of 0.5 omega this is square root of 1 plus omega squared tan inverse of omega here it is square root of 1 plus 10 omega the whole squared then tan inverse of 10 omega and you can see this is in your minus 1 plus j omega j where it will be minus 1 plus j omega minus 1 plus j omega it will be here minus 1 here j omega here so it will be in the fourth quadrant You know that this is your minus j omega term part, and this is your omega j omega. This is sigma. This is minus sigma. So minus uh, j the, okay minus one plus j omega will be available uh, in the minus one plus not here actually. I'm sorry. It is not there. Okay, it will be here. 
minus 1 will be available here j omega plus j omega so it's in second quadrant so whatever the point here if you take an angle it will be an obtuse angle that is greater than 90 degree so you should subtract 180 here so 180 minus tan inverse of tan inverse of omega okay so now you form a table vary your uh, values if you substitute omega is equal to 0 here you will get k it is not dependent of omega if you substitute omega is equal to 0 here tan inverse of 0 becomes 0 then automatically you get minus 180 degree so when omega is equal to 0 this is your gain value and this is your angle value face angle value now if you replace omega is equal to infinity then take this omega squared this outside so you'll get omega squared denominator numerator omega squared omega squared cancel if you substitute omega is equal to infinity here this particular term becomes zero one by infinity is zero one by infinity is zero so it is going to be 0.25 by 100 0.25 by 100 will be there 0.25 by 100 by the sense 0.5 by 100 0.5 by uh, okay 0.25 by 100 so you are getting it uh, in the form of 0.05 k 0.05 k when omega is infinity the the gain value is 0.05 k now if we substitute here tan inverse of infinity is 90 same way here also then you are getting you are getting the value of the angle is zero meanwhile vary the omega value from zero to infinity we very cautiously change the values you checked out how your magnitude is changing how your angle is changing if you trace the angle okay if you trace the angle how it changes is initially say it is varying from minus infinity minus 180 so the point lies here the point is lying here minus infinity minus uh, 180 degree then it moves towards something like minus 210 so the angle is minus 210 which is available in this quadrant because this is 0 minus 90 minus 180 minus 270 so probably somewhere here then it moves minus 91 so it reduces then it is moving minus 116 so it should have come this side then minus 95 somewhere here then minus 43 then it comes to zero rest to zero so your your mapping will be like similar to this it is traveling to second quadrant, comes to third quadrant, back to the first quadrant in this direction. This is mean map. You can see that K varies here. And the crossing point, this point, this point is been found out like 0.1667K. And this point has been found out like 0. 05k you can see it here so how your uh, uh, c3 will be looking c3 will be similar to this it goes like this travels here and reaches this in this direction so this is how c3 look like you can see it, yes C3 is looking like this. No need to find the locus values and all. It's a mirror image of C1. Now you, you see your uh, uh, C2. What is C2? C2, S tends to, S is uh, replaced with limit R tends to infinity R equal J theta. And 1 plus ST is considered to be ST. And S minus N uh, is more or less equal to yes. So replace those things. So you are getting uh, a value which is not a dependent value of this S term. So this is what you are getting it 0 .0, 0 0 0.05k. It's a point in your uh, right side of the G of S plane. So if you combine all these three plots, so you are getting a plot, this is your third plot, so you are getting a plot like this. Okay, this is your, uh, this is your C1. Take this one. 
So this is your C1 mapping and uh, this point is your C2 mapping and this is your C3 mapping. Now we are supposed to find, comment about what is called as the stability, the gain value we have to find. So how, how you are, we can find, we have found the point where, where your uh, plot crosses your uh, real axis. So if you want to know, this is the point to be minus one, because that is a point where we are so concerned about uh, commenting about stability. So equate this 0 0.1667k is equal to minus one. So k value is six. So what is the conclusion we can say, comment we can say, when k is equal to six, when k is equal to six, this point is minus one. When k is equal to 6, this is your minus 1. Now, when you vary the k value, how this point is going to move? Whether it is going to move this side or this side? The left side or the right side? Based on the movement, you have to comment about the stability. Let us assume some points, some values for k and see how this point is going to minus 1 plus j0 point is going to move. When you put k is equal to 0.5, let us say when k is equal to 0.5, 0 0.5, okay, the value is minus 0 0.08335. If you substitute k is equal to 0 0.5, you are getting this value. So this point is 0 0.08335. So where will be minus one far away from this point? That is here. That is what they have mentioned. When k is between zero to one, the point is here. So what is stability? This is not encircling the point. So the system is unstable from zero to one. Then we will see what are, what happens to one to one to six. So let us say this is one to six. This is not zero to six. This is one to six. When you substitute k is equal to one, I am getting a value zero point one six six seven. Obviously, so this is point one six six seven, and this is going to be your the point where minus one will be there. And if you trace the point value, that is that is here, if you trace this, even if you vary from k uh, is equal to two, I'm getting it like 0 0.334 minus 0 0.334, which is somewhere here. When k is equal to five, when you substitute k is equal to 5, I'm getting a point 0 0.0.8335. So already we know when you substitute k is equal to 0, this is minus 1. Now when k is equal to 5, this point is 0 0.8335. So it will be the minus 1 point will be which is nearer to this point. So the range of k between 1 to 6 the points will be lying in the real axis between this point and this point. So it is lying inside this loop. If you trace this, trace this, you can see that this point minus one plus J zero is encircled in clockwise. But you have a, a right hand side pole in the open loop system and the encirclement is in the clockwise direction once. It should be in anti-clockwise to be stable. But it is in clockwise, you can see it here, it is in clockwise. So the system is unstable for this limit also. For this limit also it is unstable, for this limit also it is unstable. When k is, when k is equal to 0, when k is equal to 6, it becomes marginally stable. When you substitute k is equal to 7, when you substitute k is equal to 7, I am getting a value minus 1.1669. That is, this point, this point value is minus 1.669. If 
If this is minus 1.116, then minus 1 plus J0 should be moved here. It will be in the right hand side. If minus 1.16, then minus 1 will be to the right side of that. So this enters this contour, this encirclement. If you see this, this is being encircled, this point is being encircled in anti-clockwise direction once. So this range of K is providing a stable system. So if K is greater than 6, then your system is stable because when K is greater than 6, then minus 1 plus J0 point is moving inside this contour and this contour has an encirclement of once in anti-clockwise direction and your open loop pole also, one pole lies on the right hand side of the S-plane. So your system is stable for k greater than 6. So that is what has been present com commented here. The open loop system is unstable because you are having a S minus 1 term. Unstable. And k is greater than 6, your system will be stable. I think you will be able to follow whatever we have discussed. And if you have doubts, please comment in the comment section. And uh, we, will, we will meet you in the next lecture with another problem.